was our forward-looking statement. Okay, perfect. You've committed that to memory. There'll be a test on that in the morning. All right, we're actually um, not just a prospect generator, we're actually a royalty generator. And so we've taken a lot of time to dissect the business model and refine it. And um, what we do is we take the prospect generation business model where we take prospective mineral, uh, prospective mineral real estate and seek partners to develop that property for us and we hold back a royalty. That way someone else is spending money to develop our property. So we're basically selling the risk and keeping a substantial portion of the reward. We also augment that with strategic acquisitions of royalties when we can find those at favorable levels, which is becoming increasingly more difficult. Um, outside of uh, building that royalty portfolio, um, we also engage in strategic investments, and we'll take a look at some of those in a later slide. Um, we're truly a, a global enterprise. Uh, we have properties and interests on all five um, continents. Uh, we have a lot of properties in the western United States, primarily in Nevada and Arizona. Um, interests in uh, Chile, where we have a strategic uh, partner down there. Um, a number of royalties in Haiti. We're also engaged in northern Scandinavia, which is very prospective. Um, we have royalties in Serbia. Um, we also have a lot of interests in Turkey. And Australia and New Zealand is an area of interest for us, uh, along with Far East Russia. This is sort of our growth pyramid right here. If you look at the bottom tier of that pyramid, that's where projects start off. Uh, those are basic exploration projects. We look to, to partner those, and then the partner uh, advances those, hopefully up into the um, uh, further exploration and drilling. We don't do much drilling ourselves because that's very expensive. We look to our partners to do that. And then hopefully that matures into resource delineation, and then on up the py pyramid to uh, developing into a producing mine. And then finally, uh, at the top of the pyramid, um, a producing mine which will provide us with royalty cash flow. All right, this is our um, chart on diversification. We've discussed the geographic uh, diversification. Uh, commodities, we're primarily focused on the discovery of copper and gold, but we do um, engage opportunities in polymetallics also. And uh, if you take a look at um, how our assets are currently divided, about 50% of those are in royalty status. About a third of those are available for partnership or sale right now. And then about 11% of those are already in a partnership status where our partners are advancing that property and hopefully that matures into the uh, royalty portion of the pie there. Uh, we have an awful lot of partners because we've got so many properties and projects and royalty interests and strategic investments around the globe. Um, so you can see that the list of companies there is um, uh, really quite impressive. Um, as partners, we have Newmont, Rio Tinto, uh, Coeur d'Alene, um, Entree Gold, Freeport, McMoran, and so on. You can always tell a lot about a company by who its shareholders are. So our top shareholder is uh, Stevens Investment Management out of uh, San Francisco. The principal there is Paul Stevens. He's a legendary investor. Um, he made his fortune basically um, as a mutual fund manager back in the 70s when he was one of the principals in the Robertson Stevens Funds, a very um, successful mutual fund group. Um, and Paul told me the other day when I was talking with him, um, in the mining and exploration sector, his two biggest investments are Eurasian Minerals and Ivanhoe. Um, Eurasian Minerals are management directors and employees hold about 12% of the shares, so we've got skin in the game. Uh, Sprott Global through um, Exploration Capital Partners too, and Rick Rule um, hold about 9% of our shares. Newmont owns 6% of our shares. Uh, Euro Pacific Capital Gold Fund, which is Peter Schiff's gold fund run by Adrian Day, uh, hold 2.6% of our shares. Adrian Day's clients and client accounts hold another 2.5%. 
Uh, Mason Hill Asset Management um, operates a, um, a hedge fund out of New York that holds our shares. And then Antofagasta, a large copper producer out of Chile, holds about 2% of our shares. Uh, we have a pretty tight um, share structure. And I'll tell you why we have a tight share structure. We haven't done an equity financing since March of 2011. There isn't many companies out here in our sector that can say that. And the only time we raise money is when we don't need it. And we only raise money when we have the most currency in our shares. So we're very, very careful about the way we raise money and, and about keeping a very tight share structure. Our primary royalty asset is the Leeville royalty on the Carlin trend in Nevada, uh, which covers portions of the Leeville turf and Four Corners mines. Um, since we've owned that um, uh, royalty uh, starting in August of 2012, it's paid us out about $9 million. Um, in 2017, if things continue on the way they have been for the past several months, we suspect that will pay us out about 2 to $3 million in 2017. Uh, looking at the Serbian royalties, um, if you see the yellow line that's bifurcating the slide from the north to the south there, on the east side, uh, that's Nevs on ground right there. Uh, and the collection of uh, drill holes right there is where the major discovery was made, and that was a major discovery, one of the best discoveries made, and that was made initially by Reservoir um, in probably the past 10 to 15 years, and those are just amazing intercepts there. And we were able to purchase, uh, before the um, um, deposit was really fleshed out by uh, Reservoir for $200,000, a half a percent royalty on that property for what is now Nevsun's attributable production. Now on the west side of that, the property is known as Brestovac West, we also have a royalty on that, and that's 2% on copper, or I'm sorry, on gold and silver, and 1% on all other metals. Uh, that was a property that, was, that we sold to Reservoir very early on. That was one of the um, original properties in their portfolio. We sold them sort of their uh, uh, formational assets. And um, uh, there's also some very um, interesting drill intercepts on that side, too. So um, this, uh, these royalties could potentially be company makers for us, and we expect these to uh, pay out for decades because um, Nevson has one hell of a deposit there. Um, looking on to strategic investments, our biggest and most important one is in Russia, far eastern Russia. Uh, it's called Malmish. This is about 220 kilometers north of the city of Habarovsk, uh, which is about 10 kilometers north of the Chinese border, so uh, it's very close to uh, China. And it's also right along the Amur River, which is one of the uh, major rivers of eastern Russia. Um, we do have a, f or actually, um, IG Copper, the controlling interest holder on this, has a, and, and um, Freeport McMoran have a uh, resource on this, an NI43-101 compliant resource of 1.66 billion tons with an average grade of 0.42% copper equivalent, which is the copper and silver, or the copper and gold credits combined, uh, which isn't exactly high grade, but the mineralization starts are um, at surface, are very close to surface, uh, and there is great infrastructure all the way around the property. Within one kilometer of the property is a major bargeable river that goes out to a deep water port, a massive um, natural gas um, conduit, um, a paved federal highway, um, rails within 40 kilometers, and there's a, a high voltage power line corridor within a kilometer also. So compared to something like Oil Tolgoy, this thing is sitting in downtown Toronto. And that's what makes this project really work. And then looking at our cash burn rate. So you can see in 2012, we were burning about $16 million a year. And now looking at 2016, we're probably at about, um, we haven't released our last 
quarterly finals, but we think we'll be around two and a half, three million dollars in burn. 2017, we expect to be cash flow positive. 2018, we expect to be cash flow positive. And when that happens, I think we're going to see a material change in our share price. And remember, the the first part of the equation of buying low and selling high is buying low. So now is probably the time to buy before we go cash flow positive. Thank you so much.